The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us here at CPA Academy. This is Maureen Dudley, and I'll be your moderator on today's webinar, What is New in QuickBooks Desktop 2021? Before we get started, I do want to go through a few quick technical checks. Please let me know, yes, I can see, yes, I can hear. You should be seeing Marjorie's first slide, and you should be hearing my voice. So if you would go ahead and chime in, that helps us to know that everything's going well. Yes, I can see and hear greetings from Albuquerque, greetings from Maryland, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Houston, Maine. Wonderful. It's always good to know that we're off to a good start. Of course, if you are having any trouble hearing or seeing throughout the webinar, please shoot me a question over here in the Q&A section of the GoToWebinar panel, and I'll do my best to get to you just as soon as I can. Please do keep in mind, however, there are hundreds of you here on the webinar and one of me. I'll get to you just as fast as I can. If you're here for credit today, this session qualifies for 1.5, one and a half credits of CPE, and in order to earn that credit, you must remain logged in for at least 75 minutes and answer our polling questions. Polls are gonna pop up in your screen periodically, and when a poll comes up, the slides go away and they're replaced by the GoToWebinar poll box. If you're having any problem selecting your answer and clicking submit, try putting your screen not in full screen. Try to minimize your screen to not be in full screen, and that should help you answer the polls. We here at CPA Academy will then process your credit by the end of the day, and that will be made available in your account within about 24 hours, along with an archived recording of the webinar, a copy of the handouts. Speaking of handouts, they're over in the GoToWebinar panel there, but if you can't download them from there, go ahead and just get them in your CPA Academy account. One more thing, we will be also having bonus polls today, so at least one bonus poll. So you only need five for credit, so if you do have a problem on one, don't worry, we will be having six polls today. I think that's enough housekeeping. So I'm now going to step out of the way and turn today's webinar over to our wonderful presenter, Marjorie Adams, the four lane. Welcome, Marjorie. Thanks, Maureen. Thanks so much. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to join you guys again this year for our What's New in QuickBooks Desktop 2021. Uh, it's been quite a year so far already. I'm sure everybody has been uh, finding their ways to uh, deal and manage and get through, but hopefully today I'm going to be bringing you some good news about some of the changes that we're going to be able to present to our clients or to take and use in-house. So first of all, thank you to CPA Academy as for hosting this. It's always awesome to work with you guys. Um, so you're seeing this here first. Product release was yesterday. Um, I know there are a lot of blogs that go out about features, although I don't think there are that many this year because there is a lot of confusion as to what is actually being released in product. Uh, but to see them in action, which we're gonna be doing today, looking at in product, uh, the features that are being released, um, that's pretty powerful. And Forlane's always looking out for its partners and clients by making them aware of these features that we should be taking advantage of. We pay for the products, right? Let's take advantage of these features. Uh, as a little side note, as I kind of mentioned there, I'm not fully aware of what is in the R1 versus R3 releases yet. Uh, even I have a feature that I stumbled on that I'm going to show you and I don't actually know what it does. <laughs> uh, I can't figure out the results from it, but it's there. So I, awareness is half the battle, right? Being aware is part of it. And so I'll show you the feature to you and then hopefully uh, in some follow-up, we'll be able to let you guys know what it actually does. So getting the real stuff today, the real, real, I like to say. So I'm Marjorie. We know we have a real presenter here. Yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Marjorie Adams. Um, as I mentioned, I own and operate the consulting firm Four Lane. Uh, and I personally am located outside of Austin, Texas. I'm one of those transplants from the San Francisco Bay Area. We came down here to Austin in 2009. Four Lane, however, is a 100% remote firm. We have been remote since the very beginning, uh, which is funny because in the very beginning, I didn't like to tell anybody we're a remote firm, but now it's, it's the way of the world, right? Um, and we have over 50 employees now across nine states. My personal passion uh, is to educate and empower as many people and businesses as I can. I feel that when you affect the one person, it can carry forward to affect the many, and we work very hard at our core value here of do it better by continuing to learn so that we may provide elevated business process and strategy to our clients. 
So there are a lot of terms, I think, being thrown around our industry currently, and I don't always know what to call our firm. So we're a change management firm, managed consulting, workflow consulting, outsourced accounting. But hopefully through some of this, um, these slides, you guys can learn a little bit more about what we do too. So what makes Four Lane unique first? So Four Lane is, the, has been the number one QuickBooks solution provider since 2010. Um, there's not another firm out there that can say that they have been leading for that long. Also, we are QuickBooks and ERP con consultants. We have implementation consultants on our team that implement both QuickBooks Enterprise and Acumatica, which is the ERP solution that we support. Um, that is pretty unique. I've found out there to have both. Uh, we understand accounting and systems. That's also something that makes us pretty unique. I do interviews for ERP consultants to join our team frequently, not frequently, but every once in a while. And uh, they, uh, one of the questions I ask is, can you please explain to me what a balance sheet is? And a lot of times they can't answer that question, which is fascinating, right, in the ERP world that sometimes people can't answer that question when they're setting up the system that is getting to that balance sheet. So this is something that we very much so pride ourselves on. And then lastly, of course, we are project managers for change management. That's what we do here. Um, so some of our services, formulas for our success um, are here. Everything that we do is focused on getting data to our clients so that they can make decisions. That's what we do for our customers. Um, and so for us, it's very important to know and to be the first to know or as close to the first as possible so that we can be talking to our customers about what is coming out new. Again, so we can educate them to take advantage of what they're paying for, uh, which is why I'm so passionate about this webinar that we're going to be going through today. All right, so enough about four lane. Let's go ahead on into the first start about QuickBooks. Uh, all right, so QuickBooks is focusing this year on more automation. It's the first time I've heard this term used, although I know that Intuit has focused on you know, automation in other places, but the first time I've actually heard it used from them in this way, automation to save time and boost productivity. I think that is huge. In our industry, in the accounting industry, a lot of people are talking about you know, having more automations happening, moving to more this idea of consulting um, or accountancy, right? Um, the terms, some of these terms I've heard out there, because we're not having to do as much data entry is the hope, right? Here at Fourlane, we always coach our clients that if somebody is willing to do the data entry for you, meaning somebody places an order in your website or somebody puts some information in a contact form for you, you should never have to put that information anywhere else again uh, because they did the data entry for you, right? So automation is huge. Uh, I noticed also this, this year in particular, we're seeing a lot of second generation owners taking over businesses. I'm not sure if anybody else has seen that, um, but we're, I'm seeing that quite a bit right now. And um, obviously, a lot of the uh, children taking over the business from their parents are all about productivity. And so it's really exciting to see this coming out from Intuit this year as well. Uh, okay, so today we're going to cover changes to QuickBooks Enterprise. Uh, usually that's the front runner. There aren't as many changes to just Enterprise this year. So I'm going to be leading with QuickBooks Pro Premier. Um, including Plus, there are some things that are unique to just Pro and Premier Plus um, and Enterprise this year. So that is something that is definitely different. There's some changes coming out to the Web Connector, um, some modifications that are super exciting, and then some payroll changes as well. All right, learning objectives. So I'd like y'all to be able to walk away with describing two QuickBooks Enterprise product feature releases. Enterprise is my heart and soul when it comes to the Intuit lineup. Um, so I would like for us to all be able to take away two uh, feature releases and then also to be able to describe three QuickBooks Desktop Pro Premier Accountant Enterprise 2021 product features. All right, let's go ahead and launch our very first poll. Uh, how do you use this information? Uh, 
Okay. It's always important for me to understand what people want to get from these webinars, for me to focus and and make sure that we're prioritizing information and data as it's coming out to you guys. And Marjorie, I'm sure you already know, but we want to make sure we'll leave the poll open yes. until at least 95% yeah, voted or 60 seconds. Yes, 91% already and at 30 seconds. So everybody's very excited today. Yeah, an engaged, an engaged audience. That's always good. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. I love it. Oh, it's so I just get I get a little nervous walking into this webinar, right? I'm a little bit nervous about what everyone's going to have for feedback wise, uh, but always so excited to share some of the information. All right, so let's go ahead and close that poll and let me share the results. It looks like a lot of people are using it for their own personal knowledge, which I love. It's always important, you know, continuing to learn. We have a core value, as I mentioned before, do it better so that we can. And part of that is continuing to learn constantly, right? You have to constantly be learning uh, to train my clients and uh, to implement in my own business. That's wonderful. And then, of course, to create content. That's awesome, too. Oh, it's good to be influencing. Okay, let's go ahead and move along into our first feature. So I'm actually, you guys can follow along in the slide deck. As I mentioned before, I'm actually going to do most of this uh, webinar in product because to me, it is so important to see it. So I'm logged into QuickBooks. Uh, hopefully you guys will be able to see my screen here. Um, so a couple things uh, in case, I always touch on this because you know QuickBooks, when you first logged in, starts out with this left icon bar. So if you're lost because of my view that I choose to use, <laughs> uh, I like to use the uh, top icon bar instead. Uh, it's because I'm old school QuickBooks and I get lost with this side navigation bar. So um, if if you're trying to follow along in your own, then it you can come under the view here and hit that top icon bar. I do always suggest people follow along if they can, if you have the ability to follow uh, along, if you especially for the pro advisors who downloaded the new software yesterday when it was sent out. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be talking about Intuit account roles managed inside of QuickBooks. So if I come into company and users and set up users and roles, oops, I'm sorry, I'm already logged in. As, let me get logged in as the admin user, already yelling at me. QuickBooks is already yelling at me. Uh, when I go in as the admin to set up users and roles, I'm gonna see a different look now. I was testing something right before this to show you guys um, something additional to show you all. So we go companies and users, set up users and roles. Of course, it's going to ask me to put in my password. Well, this is extra, extra instruction. This is good. It reminds us where we need to go and how to do it. <laughs> right, exactly. So this looks a little different, and I wish I could make it bigger, but it won't allow me to make it bigger. But this view looks a little different when we're setting up users and roles now, right? So first of all, up top here, when I have my different users that I have set up, I have some users, and I have their email addresses that are associated with this user and their account showing up here in the user and role section. That's huge. I think half the time when people are calling into it or calling us is they're trying to figure out which email address is associated with my admin. So it is now showing here, right? So that is awesome to be able to see that. The other thing that they've added that's slightly different is that we, we have the asterisk, which is always there, which is showing you this role has unrestricted access to view all transactions, including payroll, right? That's what the little asterisk means, but we have the caret now. And it says, these roles need an Intuit account. So based on this role, it's required that they have an email address associated with them. Okay. Now down below, this looks a little different as well. So we have the company file roles, right? So this is what we're used to seeing. I'm an accountant, which role from the role list here do I have access to? I have access to the external accountant role. Down below though, I am showing a different role now, which is my Intuit account roles. So what else outside of QuickBooks do I have access to that is associated with this company? So in this case, 
Marjorie Adams at Four Lane Madams, <laughs> uh, is has payroll manager role. Okay. If I click on the admin here, I see that I have company file admin access. My Intuit account role is primary admin, and I'll talk to you about what these different roles mean here in a second. But I think it's really important to note that this is a change, and I think that that's going to be very helpful for everyone in product. So if I click on manage roles here, um, it's going to take me into the Intuit systems now. All right, um, so I can see my users. Uh, you can search for users by email address here. I can see their status. So I invited Madams at Four Lane and it's pending over here. Um, I can add a user from here. So I can put in the user's email address. So this is not making them a user that has access to the QuickBooks file. This is giving them access to Intuit account information, right? Payroll, payments, things like that. So user's email address, what they have access to. And then basic user is a very important one, which we're gonna talk about all, what all these roles mean, but basic user, all of them will have access to, and you can't remove basic user, it's required. So if they're gonna have access, they're going to be a basic user for this file. In the roles tab here, you can see what the different roles are. Now, of course, you guys can go in and explore these. I don't, you don't need to sit here and read through them. Let me just give you at a high level what they mean. So primary admin versus secondary admin. These are both admin type of roles. The primary can transfer the primary admin to somebody else and do everything else, right? Add, delete users, edit roles, assign secondaries, et cetera. The secondary can do all those things. They just can't transfer the primary admin to somebody else. Okay. Payroll, we have two, payroll manager and payroll processor. The payroll processor cannot do payroll adjustments, basically. Okay, manager has full access to payroll functions, employee paychecks, paycheck information, everything. Okay. Payments. The payments users here, the full admin can do everything re related to an Intuit merchant service account. Payments, or hopefully everybody knows what payments are with Intuit, right? Being able to take a credit card or an ACH payment, cash in from customers. So full admin has full access to the merchant service account. Limited admin can access permissions of other users, except for the full admin permissions. And limited cannot add accounts nor services. So only the full admin can add accounts or services, right? Like adding services would be, I have a QuickBooks Enterprise Merchant Service account and I want to be able to allow for Go payments as well. You can add a service to that one account. And then a payments full user cannot manage other users or settings, nor add accounts, nor services, but they can see, right, reporting and what's being processed. Okay. Uh, and then we have a basic user. So this is really what I want to focus on. The reason I'm showing you this is our next feature, which we're going to go into. But a basic user is what you would be setting up. Like if you set somebody up to see the View My Paycheck, what used to be called View My Paycheck, so they can view their paychecks online. Or if they use T-Sheets, um, that's a basic user. And then basic users also use this thing called Receipt Management, which we're about to take a look at here in a minute. One of the terms, though, that I saw here was this term workforce. So I just wanted to point it out to you guys. I believe that the direction, I've never heard this term workforce either. There's an article in July around this term. I believe the direction of workforce is going to be for employees to have one place to log into to access their T-sheets or timesheets and access their payroll. It seems like that's the direction it's headed. Um, but I, I didn't know fully what that meant yet. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's a basic user. I've seen a couple of questions in here, so let me just pause for a second. Can a secondary admin import IIF files? So this access here has nothing to do with your QuickBooks file access. This access that I'm showing here has to do with handling your Intuit account. Okay, calling Intuit and being able to talk to Intuit about payroll. Calling Intuit and being able to talk to them about the merchant service account, et cetera. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. 
All right, moving forward. So of course, as I showed, I can add a new user here, add their email address, choose which roles they're going to have access to. On my list here, I'm not seeing a payments role because I don't have a payments account set up in my sample file that I'm showing you guys, right? If I had payments account, then I would be seeing those roles. So to me, this is a huge step in the right direction. Uh, we get calls cl with clients constantly trying to reset their admin password. I don't know the email address on my admin account. I don't, you know, and we're trying to help clients navigate that. Um, and this will help clean things up quite a bit. Okay. All right, a couple more questions. So people are asking, is there a user for entering, for only entering invoices for payment? Uh, so in enterprise, you can narrow down what people have access to do, right? Enterprise has a higher level of security than other versions of QuickBooks, the highest level of security. So you can come in here. So now on this role list here, this is where we are saying uh, what people have access to inside of the QuickBooks file, right? Not the Intuit account. So if I come in here and, and I can say that they have access to customers and receivables, you know, they can view invoices, create invoices, but not modify, delete, print them. So this would be an in, in enterprise only feature to get that narrowed down on functionality. Okay, so let's move into the next big, this is one of the biggest uh, things releases this year. So this feature receipt management is what I'm gonna be talking about. This feature is available in Pro and Premier Plus only. Right. If you don't know the plus, the plus is the subscription version of Pro and Premier, which they are changing the pricing on. So definitely check in with Four Lane on pricing. They're kind of flipping the pricing so that it makes it more exciting price-wise to get into plus, even though it's a subscription. I know so many people hate subscriptions, but it is what it is. You get all these cool features. So this is plus only and enterprise only. Receipt management will allow you to snap pictures of receipts and using OCR or optical character recognition, QuickBooks will read parts of the receipts for faster and more accurate entry. When you set, set up receipts for the first time, you will need to log into your Intuit account on your phone and in QuickBooks. So be prepared, you need to know your username, right, your email address and password to log into that Intuit account that I was just showing you. Okay. In order to access this app, so it is an app, you would go into the app store and you look for QuickBooks desktop colon space expenses. I'm sorry, I don't have that typed out for you. I just found that out about two hours ago. QuickBooks desktop colon space expenses. Let's talk about what it means. If we come in here under vendors, we now have receipt management. Takes a second to load because it's pulling down information from the cloud. In here, I can browse to upload receipts. So this is something kind of like what we had before where you could attach, scan documents and attach. But I now have the chance to snap on mobile as well. And then it'll bring it into this system. So starting up top in my dashboards, I'm gonna talk about managing users first. So we can give people access to the receipt management area of QuickBooks inside of QuickBooks, or you can limit and just allow them to have access on the mobile device. So they can not be considered a QuickBooks user, do not have to be logged into your file, you don't need a license for them. You are giving them access to a mobile app that will allow them to snap pictures and tie them back into your file, okay? So those are the two options as far as user permissions. And when they, are a man, when they become a user, a mobile user, that previous screen, we talked about a basic user access in your Intuit account, they would have to have that basic user access. Your email address that you set them up with or your personal email address can only be tied to one file. Right, so if you are doing this on behalf of your clients, you may need to set up, you know, accountant at whatever client name .com, accountant at whatever other client name .com in order to snap receipts for them so that 
because it ties one email address into one QuickBooks desktop file. Okay. All right. So you can see the dashboard. We're going to go into the dashboard in just a second. First, I'm going to go into my Reflector app so that I can show you my phone. Take me just a second here while I set up screen sharing. And it asks me to put in a code, 9355, OK. OK, so you guys can see my screen, my kids. Uh, and I have my QuickBooks desktop app here. Cute kids, Marjorie. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, two little boys. <laughs> Keep me busy. So I am logged in. Notice it pulls in my account name, Larry's Landscaping. It pulls in my company name from there. Up top, I have the three dots, which allow me to go into settings, which is not very exciting. It's just you know user ID and some company information. I guess if we're troubleshooting, that company information could be exciting. Which company am I connecting to? Uh, very basic. I have take a picture and I have view history. So let's start with take a picture. I have to stand up for this one because I'm scanning an old receipt and to be able to see the whole thing. So notice that it picks up the size of the receipt, captures just the receipt for me. It's an old Walgreens receipt. I just nobody's going to the store hardly at all anymore at all anymore, right? So I don't have very many receipts sitting around. <laughs> So I had to dig up an old one. <laughs> so now I'm going to click and say, use this photo. All right, it pops up and asks me for a name. It gives me a default name. I can fill in something else, whatever I want, office stuff. And then in the memo, I can even dictate medicine for, of course, it's not going to work now. Eh, of course, it's not going to work now, but you can dictate medicine for the office. And upload. Okay. So snap, uploaded, nothing else that I have to do, sending my file up to my QuickBooks desktop file. Now in here, the last little bit that you can do is you can click on view history, and then you'd be able to see any of the other things. You can see how many times I've tested some different stuff in here. Um, all the other receipts that you have uploaded, you'd be able to see them in here as well. So very basic, should be very simple to train users, right, how to use this and take advantage of it quickly in our businesses. Now coming back in here, there is a refresh. I found that the refresh doesn't uh, always work the best. So I'm just gonna go reload it by going to vendors and receipt management again. When I come into vendors receipt management, I do have uh, one that's in here processing. Um, that's been there since I first started testing. So it's gotta be something in my beta. Ignore that, hopefully you guys won't have that. Down below here, I have the receipts that I need to review, and then I have my reviewed receipts so that I can click on that. So a couple of things, the images, you can see the images here. If you kind of highlight, you'll be able to see the different images and what they are. Uh, the vendor, if the vendor exists on in your vendor list, it will pull that vendor in. So Walgreens, it pulls Walgreens, it understands Walgreens exists. Now, of course, we recommend to a lot of our customers not to set up like every gas station in your QuickBooks file because it'll make your vendor list grow incredibly long. Uh, however, um, if it pulls in Walgreens and Walgreens does not exist on the vendor list, there's not it's not like banking rules quite yet where it will say, oh, Walgreens equals grocery store or something like that, right? So it's not quite there yet, but maybe in the future. It will recommend, uh, recognize the bank card number. Again, however, it's a little bit funky currently uh, with the fact that the bank card number has to be the name of the account. If I had Amex in there, it would not pick it up. And notice that this receipt did pick up 1019, right? So it just didn't recognize that 1019 and 019 are the same thing. Just little, little quirkinesses, but I'm just going to say that this is amazing. Picks up my date accurately, picks up the total amount found. In this case, I actually have scanned this receipt 90 times probably for this, this webinar, so it finds a match. Um, so what you can do on the side, let me just show you one that hasn't found a match yet. I can go in and review this. It pulls up my receipt. I can zoom in, make it larger, right, move the orientation around here. Uh, I can choose my bank card that it's, I'm purchasing it on, so it defaults and understood. It picks up the date, the amount, 
I can set up a class, put a class in here. I can choose the account that it should go to, the vendor. It picked up Whole Foods Market even though it doesn't exist. So you'll see it ask me in a minute if I have a vendor or if I want to add this vendor. And then I can even associate it with a customer or job for accurate job costing expenses. And I can put in a memo here, which I didn't put in, in there before. So sometimes stuff. If I can save it and add it to the register. Here's where it pops up, says vendor not found. Would you like to create that vendor? I say, yes, please. And then it's going to go ahead and add that transaction to my register. Okay. Now in the reviewed section, scroll all the way to the bottom, I have this transaction in my reviewed. I can click view here, or of course I could go to the vendor center to Whole Foods Market, either one. Um, but I can see here, picked it up on the credit card, vendor, delivery fee, amount, right? All of the things got picked up appropriately. Now I have a preference whether or not I want everything to be marked as billable or not. So I have that checked right now. Pretty cool. Automation. Picked up the correct date, picked up the correct amount. That is huge, right? Being able to have those simple things is huge. Oh, wait, I forgot one of the biggest parts. And there's an attachment right in here. So I click on the attachment. I can reopen this image at any point from the transaction. I don't necessarily have to be in the receipt management area. So just a really, really big deal. I feel like such a huge step in the right direction for desktop. I'm really proud of the desktop team for getting this pushed through. Okay, so we have a ton of questions around this. So I'm gonna look at a couple questions while I launch our second poll. And Marjorie, I've been flagging a lot of the questions, orange if they're a question and green if they're a comment. Okay, perfect. There are a lot of questions. Um, so let me see if I can grab a couple. There are a lot of, one of them that happened right in the beginning, ERP. Some people weren't familiar with that term ERP. Can you say what that means? Yeah, enterprise resource planning. So it's essentially the ERP products are the next step up when people are leaving QuickBooks enterprise space, right? So if you have, um, you know, we talk about like QuickBooks Online and Xero and maybe some fresh books if that's still around and stuff like that, right? That's all um, one market. Then we have some QuickBooks desktop um, type things. Then we go into enterprise. There's not really a huge amount of competition for enterprise, right? In the price range of enterprise anyway. And then, of course, we go into ERP, which some people are used to like Dynamics or NetSuite. Acumatica, again, is the one that we represent definitely tell you guys one day for why I chose this product over the other ones. Intact, you hear that. Um, so it's kind of just the, the next step up product. ERP is usually uh, going to have more processing on the platform that they're in, right? N and not necessarily need to use apps, although most ERPs still use apps in some form or fashion. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Okay. All right, could you guys use this right away? Um, so let's see, this feature is Pro Premier Plus. So, so the receipt feature is in Pro and Premier Plus and in Enterprise. So the, subs the desktop subscription products is where you find it. Okay. I'm not aware if it's in av available in the Accountant Edition. The Accountant Edition is kind of a oddity this year for me. And there are things that the account, usually the accountant edition does everything that all edition, other editions do. And in this year, in enterprise at least, the accountant edition doesn't have access to some of the features that Platinum and Diamond have access to. There is no fee for the service. It's just paying for your QuickBooks subscription, right? That's the fee. So it's included in that. Da, 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 da. Okay. Hopefully I covered a couple of those. All right, and close and share. Let's see what everybody's saying. Yes, I could use this immediately. So some people, yes, probably wait a few months. Maybe we have some undecided. So easy to set up. So easy to set up. Um, and 27% say probably not. So good feedback. I will take this back to the Intuit developers and let them know. All right, moving into our next one. Improved bank feeds. Okay, so this is some cool features. Um, so if anybody ever does demos, uh, the the um, 
what's it called? The sample service-based business has the ability to demo bank feeds because they have some bank feeds data in there. So you can see. Um, so first of all, bank feeds, uh, when you set this up and you go in for the first time, it's going to tell you there's a new way to do bank feeds and you can click learn more and it'll take you to the, the um, site. This is a preference setup, similar to when they made changes to bank feeds before. It's under company preferences for checking. And there are now three versions of bank feeds that you can choose. Classic mode, if anybody uses classic mode, please, please raise your hand. I love, I, I'm, I would love to know some, I loved classic mode too. <laughs> Express mode, right, which is the way that we do it now, the most recent until now, we have advanced mode, which is what's new in QuickBooks 2021. Okay, so it's a preference to turn it on to be able to view it this way. When you log in for the first time, um, oh, I was going to show you guys in 2020, right, what it looks like, just so that in, in case you forget or have forgotten. Oh, I'm not in the right file. Eh, I'll get into the right file and show you guys what it looked like in 2021 or in 2020 just in case anybody um, forgets what it used to look like. So in here, uh, a couple of views that are different. So first of all, we have bank and credit card. So it has a very much so QuickBooks Online feel in case you guys haven't been in QuickBooks Online lately. So I love that they do that. It makes it really nice when there is uh, standardization between the products, QuickBooks Online and Desktop, because it makes it easier for clients who are making the switch. So I love seeing some of these things fall more in line. So having these two tiles up top, having these different tabs across the middle part here um, is very exciting. So right now I'm looking at the financial, the banking side. I can flip over to the credit card side to see what we have as far as credit card information outstanding. Okay. Um, we have uh, in the... Um, up top here, we have filters, right? So we can choose to filter for what type of transactions we're looking at. We can also choose to filter for different date ranges. We also have settings to say which columns we want to show. So do we want to show type? Do we want to show memo check number? And also class. You can remove or add class from here. But if any of these things are not important, we can add or remove them from here, OK? Uh, we can search on these different lists. So if I needed to, you know, I wanted to only look for everything that contains nursery in it, let me go ahead and narrow this list down and focus on what I want to focus on there. On the side, we have quick actions, which you don't have to drill down into anymore. So I can just click confirm, 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 confirm. Everything's matched, perfect. I don't have to like click the drop down and say confirm, okay. Um, in the drop down, if you wanted to, you can see view the details. You can say this is not a match, or we can ignore it from here. All right. Down below in our um, batch actions, so we have add and confirm, we have ignore, and we can have mass not a match. In the add section, again, add more details, right? Um, there's a quick action. I can go into add more details. Um, it will show you if there was a rule applied, right, which rule is, is being pulled in. Okay. So you can add, see the details, the date, the number, the payee, the account. You can add customer job, billable class amount. I can add lines. This is all pretty standard. It's just kind of a different look, right, but same information as what we had before. One thing that you can do that is different is that you can create a rule from this transaction. So I have marked something, I've said, yes, this is what I want to do, and I now want to make that my standard. Okay. Can also match to existing transactions. And we can limit, right? Search, which type of transactions are we looking at? Bills, payments, transfers, last 30 days are all. If I try to apply this $200 to here, as an example, it's going to give me the difference, right? And I can say, resolve the difference. Where do I want the adjustment to go if I'm, if I'm choosing to resolve? Okay. All right, rules. 
So some rules, the rules are changed just a little bit. So you click on rules up top here. When we go to add a rule, we can put in a rule name. I can choose, is this for money in or money out? What is this rule meant to apply to? So you can narrow down your rules now. That is something awesome. When the transaction meets any or all of these conditions, you can choose that. Narrows it down a little bit. And we can have more things that we're narrowing down based off of. So I can say when the amount is greater than, equal to, less than, I can say when the description begins with contains, matches, right? When the memo, whatever, begins with contains, matches. I can add a line and say when the memo does this and or, right, because I have any up here, any of these exist, the description does that, then choose to do this. Rename the payee, categorize it to this account, and add in the class. Okay, so just more things we can do when it comes to the different roles so that we can have more automation in product. So it'll take a little bit of time to get them set up, take a little bit of time to teach QuickBooks all the things that we need it to learn, right? Take that extra time, set up those rules so that we can have that automation happening. I got a yay, woohoo, yay. Yes, this is all versions of QuickBooks Desktop. Pretty cool. Yay, I got an awesome. Yay. I like it. Okay, another awesome to me. Awesome. So last year, uh, QuickBooks released this thing and it was called. Um, it's happening on my other screen with my other with my 2020 version. Uh, they they added this uh, this area of the program under payments reminders called mailing list, right? If you guys remember from my 2020 um, version, we had this concept of mailing list. So they changed it a little bit this year, and it's changed for the better. So it made mailing list made a very short um, debut and is gone now, and it's rebranded to be called customer groups. So where do we get to this? Under customers, we have payment reminders. <clears throat> Review and send payment reminders, we'll talk about in a little bit. Schedule payments reminders, we'll talk about here. Uh, but manage customer groups. I'm assuming that this is gonna be put some other places, but this is how you get there currently. So I come into customer groups. I have some customer groups set up already because I've been testing. Right? And I'll show you what they mean, but you can edit them, you can delete them, or you can email these customer groups from here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new customer group. So there's three steps to creating a group. First one is we want to name the group. So I'm gonna say East Customers. Okay, and then I can put in whatever Tommy's territory, whatever description I want. I'm gonna select the fields, right? So there's a whole bunch of fields I can select based off of. So I can say customer type equals not equals, and then it's gonna show me my customer types. And I add that. Then I can say status equals not equals active. Add that. State. Well, let me just continue because I got too excited. State's where I want to go. Credit limit, right? Equals, not equals, less than, greater than. That's a factor I can narrow it down. Open balance equals greater than, less than, between. Country, what country equals, and it picks up how many countries I have on my customer list showing up, and I can select multiple countries. I can see state. State, right? So I'm just going to do state equals, and I don't really want to like go too deep into all of this, but let's just choose a couple. One, two, New Jersey, New York. Okay, so there's a couple. Add, right? So you can see where this is headed. 
We can do it based off a of sales tax code, sales tax item. Okay, so very cool. We can narrow things down based off of fields and values that we have set up. This is oh, one of my, this is, this is just amazing to me that they're building things this way. And I can see based off this direction, all of the things that we're gonna be able to do in the future, including some of the feature, features I'm gonna to talk to you guys about. So I've selected the fields. And then the next thing I do is I say, oh, add these, <laughs> view selected customers. Well, guess what? My selected fields didn't have any customers. So uh, I'm gonna go back <laughs> and I'm gonna narrow this down a little bit. And maybe I don't have any, let's just say New York for now. I got too excited. Okay, I have no, oops, I have no New York customers. Let me just say California, because I know in our sample files that they have a lot of California clients. We'll pretend that California is uh, on the uh, East Coast for right now. So it contains California, next. All right, so there's some customers. So 24 customers off of my customer list show up on this list, okay? So that means I'm narrowing down my customers based off of these criteria that we selected before. Now, the coolest part about this is this little checkbox here. I can automatically add new or remove existing customers based on fields and values selected in this group. What does that mean? So let me go ahead and look here. So Edward Blackwell, et cetera, let me go ahead and say finish. Let me set up a new customer. All right, and this is gonna be California East customer. And this customer is going to be in 123 ABC Street, Austin, CA, 12121. Okay. So I set up this brand new customer on my customer list. Now at the customer level, I'm not seeing any of this information, right? I assume too at some point it'll say like what customer groups are these customers applying to? But when I come back in here and I edit my East customers and I take a look, next, next, here I have, <laughs> where, why is it not? Uh, of course, in my demo, it's going to not do it. Okay, well, I have, let me go into my West Coast customers or my, my true West Coast because I actually, yes. West Coast customers, next, next, and there, oh, maybe I just didn't see it because I was looking for E, California East Coast customer, right? So they automatically, even though I just set this customer up, because of the criteria on the selected field, it is picking it up on my list that now this customer is part of this, this list. So that automation is a big deal. Okay, big deal. And I'll show you why it's a bigger deal for enterprise in a minute. So these are customer groups. The fact that you can set up your customers, you can set up criteria around it, that the cust based on that criteria, customers can automatically be added to a particular group. Now, what do we do with these customers, right? So one of the things that you can do with these customers is you can email them from here. Selected all these customers, I can send them all an email. Now, of course, you want to be careful with things like this because you don't want to be mass spam emailing anybody. But if you have permission to email your customers in this fashion, you can send out mass emails to all of the people on this list. Pretty cool. Okay. The other thing that you can do is the next section in our payment reminders, which is review and send payment reminders or schedule payment reminders. So this feature came out last year. When it came out last year, it was tied to mailing lists, right? But now we can tie it to our, uh, our customer group. So what's nice about that is I can create a new schedule, right? An invoice schedule or a statement schedule. This is an invoice schedule. This is a statement schedule. I can choose which group. I'm sending these two, and then I can add reminders, right? Send statement on this day, 20th of every month, for the statement period, all to date, or only open transactions, right? Or only open transactions that are over this amount of days, 
item, what do I want to include, item details, memo, due date, which template, which email template, generate statement. So not just automated invoices anymore, we can now do automated statements. Okay. Big deal. And why it's an even bigger deal is because of that customer groups. The fact that your customers, you set them up in the system and now magically they're going to show up in this customer group and then they're going to get these reminders magically as well. Pretty cool, right? So let's say you have two sales reps. One sales rep likes to be extra harsh and, you know, whip his customers into shape. One sales rep is a little bit uh, more passive and might like to be a little bit more gentle with his, her customers. They can have different reminders, different email templates, and it automatically happens. Don't have to worry about it. Don't have to think about it. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. Uh, well, Kathy, that is a very interesting question. Kathy asked, how long do we recommend that people wait to upgrade to the latest product so that bugs can be worked out? So I usually wait for people. I usually tell people to wait <clears throat> like until you know, November, December, January sometime. However, the last several years, um, if there is, I mean, these features are big every year and they can have a huge impact on time. And time going into holidays is a really big deal. So some of these things I think are worth upgrading if you're going to use them right away. Time's all we, time is the most important thing we have right now, right? We've all, we're all learning that really clearly. Okay, so second thing that customer groups feeds into, this is enterprise only. So all of everything that I've been showing so far is all, all SKUs, all versions of desktop. This feature is enterprise only, however, and it is a big deal. It's one of the top asks as far as I know what people have been asking for. So this has to do with user setup. So we go into setup users and roles. Again, enterprise has the highest level of security than other, any other Intuit product. Right, as far as being able to segregate what people have access to do. So I'm going to click on my roles list and I'm going to create a new role from scratch. And I'm going to call it Tommy Salesperson. And then I'm going to go to my centers and I'm going to click on customer center and we have a new custom access level down here. If I click on that custom access level, I can click define and look at that, I have my customer groups. So what this means, Tommy's territory, I can say Tommy has access to create new customers, that's fine. If Tommy creates a new customer that falls outside his territory, Tommy will not be able to see that customer. Right, I can create it, could fall outside. Tommy has access to view, modify, delete, print, view, balance of customers in his territory. Very cool. Very, very cool. This is one of the things that people have asked for before. I want my sales reps to only see their sale, their customers. I want my project managers to only see their jobs that they are on. Very cool. Yeah, big deal. Customer groups are available in all versions. This custom access is available in enterprise only. Yeah, huge deal. Thanks, Kim. I'm getting so much excitement today. Yay, this is what I was hoping for. It's great. I love it. All right, so let me get into poll three. I'm running behind on my polls. Um, all right, so how would you best use these data level permissions. What do you think the best use of them would be? Sales reps. Yeah, and just as far as timing, you have oodles of questions coming in. So if you could get through, but don't worry everyone, we will be passing these questions on to Marjorie. So if she can't get to all of you today, not to worry. Yeah, I'm getting nervous about timing. I, we, we said an hour and then I said an hour and a half. Um, so I have the, the last bits here, there's there are several more things to go through, um, but a lot of them are gonna be in slides because they're not 
they're not things that I can show. So should be going a little bit faster here, but yeah, definitely need to speed it up a little bit. And all the questions, we will get to all the questions after um, if we do not get them today. So we'll be reaching out um, directly, but I'll try to get through as many as we want. Okay. Good question, Lisa. Uh, all right, so let me go ahead and close the poll. Give a couple extra seconds here, 91%. But we're over a minute, you can okay. move on. Okay, cool. So uh, let me go ahead and share. So it looks like not too many people, 50% say they won't use it, 16% sales rep, 20% project managers, and 13% um, purchasing. So in here, uh, in this version also, when I go to create a new role, under um, centers, I also have vendor center, which does have that custom access as well. Um, so if I click on that custom access, I can set up a vendor group limiting in the same way, but different fields, right? Limiting access, vendor type, status, 1099, availability. Oops, I'm not showing my screen, there we go. 1099 availability, open balance, credit limit, country, state. So these are vendor grouping as well. The only way I've seen to get to that is when you're in enterprise and setting up the custom permission. So right now, as far as I know, the vendor grouping is only enterprise. Okay, let's move on. Customized payment receipts. So this is something that's fascinating to me. Uh, Intuit said that this is one of their top voice of the customer requests in the last year. So I'm glad to share it. Hopefully it'll make people happy. I don't think I've heard it before. So in our templates now, we have a new template called a payment receipt template. Let me see if I get a whole bunch of yays for this one too. Uh, so just like we have other templates in QuickBooks, we can come in, add logos, choose what information we're gonna add. We can do a cu additional customizations, see what we're gonna have in our headers. Maybe we don't call it payment receipts. Maybe we just call it receipt, date, payment methods, right? So we can make modifications, choose which columns we want to see and or rename or reorder the columns. And then we can dive into the layout designer to get more specific with what we want to narrow down. So I'm not going to go into how to do templates. I'm sure a lot of you guys know how to edit your templates. But you can now have a template for payment receipts. So in your preferences under payments and company preferences, there is an area to select your default payment receipt that you want to use once you set your template up. And then when you go to customers and receive payments, Right, here's customer receipt payment. Under the formatting tab, I can also modify if I want to use one of my other templates. I can choose to use one of my other templates from here. Okay. So if I go here and I go previous and formatting and preview, I now have the ability to have a customized template. Pretty neat. Okay. All right, so in enterprise only, this is another enterprise only feature. And there's only a couple, as I mentioned. Um, we do have the ability now to print price prices on labels. So in enterprise, right, we have uh, under items and inventory, advanced inventory setting, we can have barcode labels, enable barcodes. This has been here for a while. Um, once you have barcodes set up on your items list, right, so if I get into an inventory part, I have my barcode number there that QuickBooks generated for me. Then when we go into print our forms and print our labels, print our item barcodes and say okay, and do preview, you can see here, right, I have the ability to have prices printed on my barcode labels as well. It's a little minor change there. All right, let me go ahead and get back into my slide deck for our, I'm gonna have to progress way far forward, for our next section here. So automatic payments reconciliations. 
So there are a couple of new things coming out with payments reconciliation. So I don't know how many people use uh, QuickBooks for payments. Um, hopefully a lot of people because it makes every, it makes life a lot easier, right? Because it does reconcile itself. All right, let me show my screen. So they have a new look to, auto, to payments reconciliation. So it kind of has like a, uh, a look of uh, what the online banking has, right? Or bank feeds. So it allows for booking credit card fees faster. Uh, when I come in here, I can't show it to you because I don't have a credit card account set up in my demo file. But you know, I have all the payments to record, right? All the different batches will be showing up in here. How many have been recorded? How many are pending deposit? Lots of different information available here. Okay. I didn't fully understand, whoops, I didn't fully understand the changes that they were making with this except for the look, because um, a lot of this stuff is auto-reconciled um, already uh, when you have payments, but this is one of the features that they're talking about and this new look. We can talk about QuickBooks Capital here in a second too. So there's some pretty cool stuff there. So web connector changes. Again, I don't think I don't know when this one comes about, um, but there's going to be some major web connector changes coming about, um, allowing for a REST API, a representational stage trans, a representational stage transfer, REST R E S T uh, API. So it'll have a closer feel to QuickBooks Online where we can have continuous access and real-time updates, right? So right now, when you have uh, connecting to an app with QuickBooks Desktop, you have to be logged into QuickBooks Desktop and it's not real-time, it's based off a timer or it's based off of a manual action, right? Push, 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 because I did this. Um, and so we're gonna be moving more closer to that. We do a lot of integrations um, with QuickBooks here at Four Lane. We do a lot of custom integrations. Uh, so that is uh, something that we are very excited to see the output of that. I don't have the documentation yet, but supposedly we're gonna be getting documentation shortly. So let me go ahead and launch a poll around custom because this is a fascinating topic to me too in talking about automation. So everybody has these outside systems. Me personally, I find that a lot of people have more often than in the last 10 years have homegrown systems. They're making their own software nowadays. People. I feel like are doing going back to the days of making their own homegrown software. So if your clients have external uh, information that's flowing into QuickBooks, how is that happening? It's custom integrations directly through the API. We have custom integrations through the web connector currently. So if you guys use, you know, WebGility and that's the answer. Most of them go through the web connector. And then apps, right? I think most of those go through the web connector. Uh, and then my clients don't usually use data outside of QuickBooks. That's also a fascinating one. So let me go ahead and close and share. Looks like most people don't have data flowing in from outside the system into QuickBooks. Um, some using custom through the web connector, so that's pretty cool or all of the above. I like that answer too, Mike. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward. So desktop manager. So in the desktop manager, I think every year there is a little bit, a little step forward in making installation faster, easier, less complicated for people. I think that probably the number one reason people call support is because of installation problems. And so QuickBooks is continuously trying to improve the installation process. Uh, so you can, they have this thing now called the desktop manager that will be um, able to access. I didn't have it in my beta version here, but I can talk about it. You can install the products through the desktop manager. And it's a one-click installation. Right? You don't have to go through a whole bunch of questions. Now, the registration, you still have to register and do those kinds of things. But one-click installation to move from 19 to 20 as an example. Okay. I'll make it as easy as possible, especially because we're looking at having Pro and Premiere Plus. 
more and more in our world. Okay, next, Tool Hub. So this has been released for a little while. I didn't realize that it was released for a little while, but if you haven't run into it, it's here now. So before there's all, there's all, you know, QuickBooks File Doctor, there's all the different areas, right, for us to go get kind of DIY tools to fix our QuickBooks files if we're having problems. So now uh, QuickBooks decided to put all those tools together in one place, which is amazing, and they call it Tool Hub. All right, so how do you get to Tool Hub? Uh, you can go into your help menu, and it should be there, QuickBooks Tool Hub, right? And that's where you would go and download it. So let me get to my desktop here so I can open it up for you to see and it, what it looks like. So in the Tool Hub, we have company file issues, right? So there's some quick fix that they do. They can run the QuickBooks File Doctor from here and then open the QuickBooks WinLog. Any network issues, so this one is good for the 6,000 errors. Any network issues, right? Um, so if we're having the H20, H505, H202, 203 issues, this should help fix that. And working with the database manager. Program problems goes back to the Fix My Program or the Program Diagnostic Tool. Okay, so that fixes some Microsoft issues possibly that could be happening. Also the PDF repair tool. Installation issues, so that goes to the diagnostic tool again, usually it's some Microsoft things or you know, um, ports that need to be open. And then the 3371 error fix. Password reset, so you can go in and do some password resets through here. Um, how to access help and support, enterprise specialists, there's a unique um, area for enterprise, right? Enterprise clients get uh, different support than Pro Premier Plus. We used to have the HVAMs um, that they would talk to high value account managers at Intuit, um, and that team still there, but it's a whole new team this year. So, and, then, and some of the other support areas, so getting to camps, right? The customer account management area inside of Intuit, and then advanced tools. Right, um, change startup apps and just pretty cool things, right? Check for Windows updates, download QuickBooks Desktop you can do from here, firewall things, uninstall change programs. So it just takes you to things inside of your environment that you could possibly need. So I just like that it's organized in one nice, clean little place. Um, it's pretty cool uh, to have that. So while I get my screen fixed back up here, I have my next poll. What is the most common issue you have for clients with QuickBooks. And just as a reminder, everyone, we have no way to register your answers to the polls if you type them in the Q&A section. So go ahead and make sure you select one. Even if you find something that doesn't seem to be what you want to answer, just choose the closest and make sure you hit submit. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. All right. getting some answers here. We do tend to get quite a bit of um, QuickBooks Enterprise file issues, right? We work with uh, that a lot, needing condensed data, consolidate data, separate data. We, we, we get all sorts of just, I think this year I, we had a 12 gig file that was in QuickBooks Enterprise 2006. We were helping with, like, wow, that's a long, that's an old file. That's an old file. Okay, I'll give a second here and go ahead and close and share. So it looks like other people also have file size issues quite a bit, 37%, 12% crashing black screen. So they sh there is um, some solutions in the tool hub for that. Cannot pass verify. Um, so that one um, also some tools in there and then network setup issues, there's some tools in there as well. Okay. Perfect. Let's go ahead and move forward to our uh, next, I don't know what happened there. There we go, QuickBooks Capital. So you'll see in product advertising for this, this has been around, this is not new, but I think that the way that we can access 
the um, like how we can uh, get set up with QuickBooks Capital is new. Um, it has some simple steps for people to be able to get set up. So first of all, um, there's in-product access to be able to apply to get access to five to $100,000 loans from QuickBooks, right? When you do this, they're gonna, you're gonna, whoops, 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 whoops. they're gonna have you sign into the bank account. Um, so they're gonna look through your bank account and, and at cash flows, right? As opposed to having to, uh, having to gather tons of data when you're applying for a loan, right? You have to gather your own, whole entire life and present it to the bank in order to get a loan approved. So they're, they're simplifying that step with being able to access your main bank account and using that as the documentation to get the loan. They tell you, they ask you a little bit about your business, right? Where you're going to deposit your funds. And then you hear back within two to three business days. Couple things that are also very cool is that it will tell you up front what your percentage rate is. So I'm borrowing $25,000 for a course of six months. I'm going to pay $786 in total in interest on that $25,000 that I'm borrowing. So they'll tell you up front and they'll also tell you what your monthly payments will be. So pretty neat. Access to cash. A lot of people have been needing that this year too. Okay, moving along, payroll liabilities, reminders. So again, I don't have payroll set up in my sample file, but so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, we have, let me close out a quick little tool hub here. Uh, when you go into your employee center, and you click on payroll, and then you have pay liabilities tab, you can set up a payment reminder. So that I think the feedback here was that a lot of people said they don't log into QuickBooks every day, so I didn't know I was supposed to pay my payroll taxes this week. So you can now set up a, pay, a payment reminder that goes on your calendar. Okay, so you can add it to your calendar. Pretty cool stuff there. Going back into the slide deck here, so you can see some of the steps, right, to add it to your calendar. It'll say, what do you want to add? It'll put the details in. This is in Outlook, your Outlook calendar. Which app do you want to connect to, right? Based off this file, I want to connect to my Outlook calendar, and then it'll put some information on your Outlook calendar. When it's due, and some information about the check. So hey, don't forget. Pretty cool. Okay, simplified payroll setup. So uh, this is the last feature that we're gonna be talking about today, and then I have a poll, and then I'm gonna to start to get into some of these questions. So again, another thing that we see a little bit of every year is how to simplify the payroll setup. When people are going through payroll, this is, uh, this is when, you know, this is one of the pain points why people choose not to set up payroll with QuickBooks, as they say, it's so hard to set it up, right? Why they choose not to go with QuickBooks for payroll. So if you set up payroll in the past, you know, it can be a bit tiresome. You set up employees and they set up benefits and then you have to assign the benefits to the employees each individually. It can be quite a pain. Also, if there's errors, it shows up at the end. It's not incredibly helpful with what the errors are or how to fix them. So they've made some changes to the look and view. So the error section, um, they're gonna have, right, uh, more frequently, can you get to the error section? You can click on the error section and they'll give you what the errors are with the red icons and then things you should know about these particular errors okay, so that you can figure out how to fix them faster and easier. And then also they have the ability to batch assign uh, employees rates or batch assign employees different benefits. So that makes it a lot easier to set up payroll when, you, when you're uh, going to use QuickBooks for payroll. Okay, 
All right, so let me just go ahead and, oh, I'm sorry, there's, here's the one, there's one, right? Here's the one thing that I couldn't, didn't know. So maybe by the, this time next week, I'll have an answer. I've been asking, I've been asking, but there's a, a unknown report preference that I noticed that's new under reports and graphs. It says collapse transactions. And it says select this checkbox to combine collapse multiple items and transaction a single line. This will cause some reports to take longer to run. I think what this means, because we get this question frequently, is people say, I want to run my transaction detail report for all invoices, but I want to see one line for the invoice. I don't want to see every single line for the invoice, right? So details of transaction, not summary, but not every line of the detail. I think that that's what it's going to do, um, but I couldn't find a report that actually worked on. So fingers crossed. Uh, I only have the beta version still <laughs> as well. Uh, okay. So thank you guys for the time today. Let me go ahead and launch my last poll um, so I can give this feedback. It's so important to give this feedback uh, to me to Intuit, which feature resonated with you the most. If, if one of these did not resonate with you the most, please ping me what they are. That was the most exciting part for you. Um, and then I can make sure to pass that along. So while we're collecting uh, some of this, I'm going to start to kind of scroll up, if that's okay, through some of these questions. Uh, QuickBooks Capital, is this available in Canada, Carol? I don't know the answer to that question, but I can find out for you. Um, Tool Hub is not only available for 2021 QuickBooks purchasers. Tool Hub, you can find, uh, you can find actually on the support site. So it's not just in 2021. You can find it now if you go to, into a support site. Um, currently, so let me go up some of these. Let me. All right, uh, I think I'm just going to start up towards the towards the top. Indicate when a new feature is available in the U.S. version or the Canadian version. Sometimes the U.S. gets features before the Canadian version, so I didn't get to do that. But Carol, we can give you information on that later. Uh, we answered what is the ERP. All right, let me go ahead and close this poll and share the results. So it looks like receipt capture and improved bank fees were big wows, customer group, data level permissions, also wows. Um, okay, so let me, I'm just gonna continue and go through a couple of questions for the next uh, five, 10 minutes. And uh, then anybody that has anything additional will be following up, like I said, after the webinar. I don't like to leave anybody uh, without their questions answered. So Randall said, will QuickBooks Desktop and or QuickBooks Online allow one to duplicate a company's data into a com second company in order to try to correct some original data entry issues? Uh, so QuickBooks Desktop does. You can take a backup and restore backup and rename it something else. Uh, QuickBooks Online, I believe to do that, you have to take it down to desktop and then push it back to a new QuickBooks Online file. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, all right, let's see. I've not received 2021 edition in ProAdvisor email. Um, so that you would have to log into your Intuit camps for. Uh, how does the user get email address registered with Intuit? So in product, you can do that, right? Um, if you go in and you add users in product. Uh, so you can click on that manage roles, and then you can add users from there. Mm. How did Marjorie get to the Intuit account user management? So I just did that. Hopefully that was good, Kathy. Okay, will 2021 Premier Desktop have the same features of Enterprise? So no, the things that are Enterprise only again for 2021 are going to be those data level permissions. So those extra um, permissions to be able to limit people to only see customer groups or certain vendor groups. And then also to uh, be able to print pricing on barcode labels. And then receipt management is only available in Enterprise Pro Plus and Premier Plus. Uh, okay, we already answered that one. And I can go back into my slide here in case you guys have any questions. 
And Marjorie, if I yeah. could jump in here for a minute, I just want to read you something you might not have seen. This is my first webinar with Marjorie and Fourlane. Great presentation, all oh, caps. Thank, thank you. you. Lots of new information that will be very helpful with clients. Thank you, Tina, for letting us know. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's always good to get uh, good feedback. Good feedback. Yay. Uh, okay. How does uploading receipts affect the size of the QuickBooks file? Um, so when you have any attachments in a QuickBooks file, they don't store them in the actual QuickBooks file. They just drag them into a folder next to the QuickBooks file and they store a link like a Windows navigation link to that folder. So it's actually not, it's, it's just, you know, uh, file size wise, it's just a link. Um, so one field that it's filling in. So not a lot of size issues. Is Plus available in desktop version? So yeah, Plus is the desktop version. Let me set Did you already answer when this product's going to be made available? You might have already answered that. So the the accountant's edition was available yesterday, and then for non pro advisors, um, it would come out the twenty first. So if you guys need help with purchasing, also too, huh, a little. Uh, unknown fact too. So if you wanted to make sure that you have taken advantage of it, um, we are selling the 2020 version right now. And with the 2020 version, you will get the 2021 version. Um, of course, with Plus or with Enterprise, you would be getting it anyway because you're on the subscription model. Um, but you know, you guys can reach out to us to uh, to get both basically if. Um, I, I always like to have as much as possible, right? And pay for one, get both, the twofer. Might as well do that before. But we can't do that after the 2021 release is released. We can only do that before, so the next couple weeks. Um, all right. Is enterprise for very large companies? So not necessarily. Enterprise, so for me, when people move to enterprise, is going to be security-based because it's a higher level security. Uh, when you do have more data, I think it's more powerful. It does have QuickBooks Advanced Reporting, which we do uh, QuickBooks Advanced Reporting reports for our clients a lot. We have a ton of reports that we've done for clients recently. Um, and so you have greater reporting capabilities. Basically, we, we look at it as from our customer standpoint, the sweet spot for enterprise is going to be they pushed over a million and are maintaining over a million and are headed up into like the 10 million in revenue mark. It's a really sweet spot for us. So it's not just large companies necessarily, um, it's people who need more security and better features. Uh, desktop now only subscription, no, you can still buy Pro and Premier without a subscription, you just won't have access to receipt management as an example. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, you can scan additional backup. Um, just as always, you could always scan additional backup and add attachments. I don't know that you would want to do the take a picture of every single page. That might be kind of annoying, right? You can just scan all pages and attach that right to the document for vendor files. Um, but you can do it that way if you wanted to. Uh, take a picture of each one. Um, so somebody asked, please remind me to how I find the app. The app is QuickBooks Desktop colon space expenses. If you just put QuickBooks Desktop, I'm pretty sure that'll come up. But QuickBooks Desktop colon space expenses. A lot about receipt management. I love it. She's going to be so excited. <laughs> the uh, person responsible for this uh, release. Very excited. Um, is there a revenue range at which you recommend moving from enterprise to more robust ERP? Uh, so not revenue range. I mean, you know, yes, ish. If you know, when we're when people are headed from five million to ten million plus, then that's usually when we're talking to customers about making a move. But it's uh, transaction size is usually one of the biggest ones, and then honestly, one of the biggest ones is people just, um, you know, they want to say that they're in Acumatica because when they go to investors, they want to be able to say that they have this this product that they're using it's kind of a cool unknown like you know i don't know, it's kind of like almost being able to buy you know build your own homegrown system type thing you can do so much with it so the coolness factor is is uh there 
uh, bank feeds, and let's see. Just keep going down our list here. We have so many questions. Does the version, does this version have the statement writer? Um, the statement writer, I think, is in the accounts edition. I don't know that many people use it anymore because of the access to Excel. Uh, looks like I've gone through. Can you explain again how to get Plus? So if you're looking for QuickBooks Pro Plus or Premier Plus, um, you can go to Intuit and request those. Those are SKUs with Intuit. They've got Pro One User Plus, Pro Two User. Um, of course, you can also go to resellers like myself, support the small business side of things, uh, and purchase through us. Our pricing is generally better than Intuit's anyway, just like accountants get some better pricing, right? So definitely reach out to me. We can help you out with that or enterprise. Does QuickBooks allow recording assets and liabilities by class in the balance sheet? So yes, you can, like journal entries, you can put classes in there. Um, that's a whole loaded question, I think, Howard. So maybe we can talk offline about that one. There's a lot of yeses and nos to that question, but mostly yes. Um, hmm. So Marjorie, yes. people are saying they're loving this and they want to see your archived webinars. So I just oh. put that in the chat section. If you want to um, copy that, the cpaacademy.org company slash four lane, you can see some of Marjorie's um, archived webinars. Yes, we do this every year, every year. So much fun. Do you, many not-for-profit companies use QuickBooks? Oh, Randall, yes. I think that the statistic out there is something like 80% of businesses use QuickBooks. I don't know if that's true. I've heard that before. I don't know the real truth behind it, but I mean, it's a tremendous amount of companies that use QuickBooks. Okay. Uh, how effective is the FAM transfer integration? Is that fixed asset manager? Um, Brian, I don't know if that's, so it should be, I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Uh, but I can get with you offline on that one. If that's fixed asset manager, it should transfer just fine. Okay. Well, I will hang out here for a couple more minutes in case anybody has other questions. I'm trying to still scan through. Um, thanks, Jay. I definitely, I, I'm so passionate about this product. I'm so passionate about QuickBooks. Um, so that is just wonderful. People are saying fantastic webinar. People are asking how to get to your archived webinars. Yeah. People have loved this, Marjorie. So we yeah. might just have to have you more than once a year, I think. <laughs> so let me go ahead and wrap this up. Um, let me go ahead and wrap up. And then if you want to see if there's any, like maybe one last question or two that you want to take, if we've missed anything while I'm wrapping up, you can look if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for presenting. As you can see, it's been an excellent session, everyone, and lots of great feedback people are saying so for you uh, those of you that are here for credit we will be processing that by the end of the day and you will find that available in your CPA Academy account within about 24 hours along with an archive recording of this webinar and a copy of the handouts if you want to watch it again or or look back through and remember all these great things she showed us today you're also going to have the opportunity to give a full webinar evaluation and that link um, should have gone out to you by email but the evaluation links are also available in your cpa academy account and thank you everyone for attending i think we'll just let marjorie take one or two more questions and then we'll let everyone get on their way for the day marjorie awesome yes I think I saw one more, you know, am I unclear? You can order from Intuit or you can order from Four Lane. Uh, we, are a four, we are an Intuit reseller, so it's different than an accountant. We're not just a pro advisor. We actually resell the product, buy stock and resell licenses. So um, we, you can purchase from us and we can reach out to you. I see some of these questions, but you can reach out to me always, Marjorie, M-A-R-J-O-R-I-E at Four Lane. If you put M. Adams, which is Madams at Four Lane, which I <laughs> try to stay away from that one because it sounds funny, but um, I, it also goes to me as well. Uh, so that one's a little bit easier to spell and remember. Um, is desktop still better than online for clients with inventory? Uh, so everybody can put their opinions out there right now, but I will say yes, always yes. Desktop is better for inventory. Um, desktop is still my love uh, personally, although we, you know, QBO is creeping in there with some of those features. They do a good job as well. They've got some approval kind of workflows and 
multiple uh, multiple um, languages. So pretty cool stuff too. Okay, I'll go ahead and wrap up on time. Thanks, Maureen, so yes. much. <laughs> thank you for having us. Bye, Marjorie. People are saying thank you. You're one of my favorite Intuit trainers. Thank you, thank you. So yes, we're going to wrap up. Please join us again here for more CPAacademy.org webinars. We love our members and we love our presenters. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.